All right, it's been a while since I've done a pool test and I've got a really great one planned for today. I'm gonna compare and contrast five rigs that we often use in saltwater fishing just to see how baits look differently when they're retrieved using these different rigs. This is something I'm very curious to find out the results on. Come along with me. All right, I'm here at the lovely home of two very good friends of ours, Dan and Jill McNeil. They always let me use their pool for the pool test. So shout out to them. Now let me show you my setup. It's definitely pretty janky, but it's always worked for me in the past. All right, I got a push pole that I use. I tie some braided line to the end of it, run it through a traffic cone, got a stick tie to the other side, and I got this GoPro mounted to the top of it. I'm gonna lower that into the water and cast in front of it so you get to see how these different rigs look in super clear water. Obviously, in real world, it's not gonna be this clear, but you at least get to see how the baits act. and It'll help you make a determination of how to rig in certain situations. All right, let's get set up. Okay, first off, I'm gonna go with just a straight jig head. This is a quarter ounce death grip. And on all these tests, I'm gonna be using a lemon head matrix shad just so you can see the bait and see the action. Now I've got it tied to 30 pound mainline braid with about a four foot, 15 pound soft steel fluorocarbon leader. Just to give you an idea of what type of line we're using and how that energy might transfer to the jig head. Let's take a look. With just the jig head, you can see it's much easier to maintain control and contact with the lure. All right, this is a rig that I definitely fish most often, no question about it. It's got a number of advantages. Number one, you definitely feel every strike, well, most of the time, or you're much more likely to feel a strike with this than with some of the other ones. And when you feel that strike, you can react more quickly than with some of the other techniques. It's also a lot more fun, to be honest. I mean, you get to feel the tap. And to me, that's the most exciting part of fishing. You know, people like the saying that the tug is the drug. Uh, I mean, for me, once you're fighting a fish, not that it's not fun, but the most fun part of the entire experience is that tap. That's what I love to feel. And some of the other techniques, you don't necessarily get to feel that. You do with this, and that's why I fish a lot. But, of course, this bait is always hugging right to the bottom, and that can be definitely a disadvantage, particularly in grassy situations. All right, let's take a look at one of the other ones. All right, next up is a double rig. Now, I didn't complete the rigging of this because I wanted to show you how I do it. So basically, I cut a length of maybe five feet or so of fluoro. I've got a quarter ounce death grip on this side and a three eighth ounce death grip on this side. That's almost always how I fish this. I use this in depths of like 12 to 20 feet or so. I use the uni knot to tie each one on. And then I come about a third of the way up from the quarter ounce, super important. Three eighth ounces on the bottom, quarter ounces on the top. Come down and just tie a loop, that's it. Just an overhand knot making a loop like that. And we're gonna tie this to our main line right here, super easy. And I throw this on a spinning rod Super important you do so, at least for me it is, because these baits have a tendency to helicopter in the air, and so they pull line off at different rates of speed off of your bait caster and cause instant backlash. I have a great deal of trouble throwing double rigs on bait casters, always use spinning gear. Let's see how it looks. Now, some of the advantages of this way of rigging is it looks more like a school of fish. That fish might be reluctant to hit that first one, but when the second one passes, it might be more inclined to do so. Also, of course, if you're throwing into a school, you're likely to catch two, doubling your catch rate. Now, a disadvantage is that you really can't maintain as well of contact with your lure kind of feels more spongy and so you may not detect strikes as well as you would with just a single rig. What happens a lot of times when you're fishing a double rig is you'll catch a fish on that back bait 
and to the other fish around, it looks like he's chasing this front bait. So they'll hit it to get it before he can get it. Now, from this perspective, it looks pretty good. Another one of the drawbacks to this is because you're not maintaining constant contact with your lures, fish can hit this and spit it before you ever know it. You know, you figure when a fish hits a bait like this, we got 3 8 ounce of lead right here, it just feels very unnatural. Nothing that a fish hits in nature has that amount of weight to it. I mean, face it, most fish are neutrally buoyant. So a lot of times they'll hit it, feel that weight, and spit it immediately before you ever even know you got a bite. Or even if you do detect a bite, by the time you set the hook, the fish has spit it. That's less of an issue with the next one we're going to look at. Be right back. All right, next up is a drop shot. If you notice, I don't have this one fully rigged yet either, just to show you. I've got an eight sinker, one ounce on one side. On the other side, I've got just a plain hook. Definitely don't want to rig this with a weight. You want that bait up off the bottom, kind of fluttering around. But let me show you what I do. I like to just nose hook the matrix, just basically like you're hooking a, a minnow, a cockahoe or something like that. Basically like that. Now I'm gonna take that, go a third back, about like yay, and make our loop just like we did with the double rig. Now throwing this on a spinning rod is less critical because this top bait doesn't have as much weight, but still it's a lot easier on a spinning rod. So that's what I'm gonna do here. All right, looking at this in the pool, I don't fish a drop shot enough. <laughs> it looks really, really good. Super tantalizing. Of course, a big advantage is you can kind of hold bottom and almost just shake your rod and that bait will just dance around. It really just kind of hold in one spot. If you feel confident you're in the strike zone, just deadly. Now that's definitely easier with the bank sinker or some other type of sinker, other, sinker other than this egg sinker, but it still could be accomplished basically just kind of slowly walking the bait and just slowly moving it. And of course a big advantage to this as well is there's no weight to this. So when a fish hits it, it feels basically like a bait fish or a shrimp. The fish is not going to have a sense that this is not real. All right, be looking for a long form drop shot video in coming weeks, one's coming for sure. Oh, but I do need to mention the disadvantages. And without question, you do have less sensitivity. You're less tied to your lure with this than you would be with say just a jig head. Because think about it, this weight's on the bottom. The bait may be up here, barely kind of slow falling down, and it's not really exactly tied tightly to your rod. So a fish might hit and you never know it. Of course, the good thing is that the fish is less likely to spit it. So when you do kind of go to make that next top, it's going to feel spongy and super important when you're fishing with these. Any detection of anything that's not normal, you got to set the hook because you're not really generally going to feel that hard tap like you would with a jig head. Sometimes you do, but not always, mostly not. All right, let's take a look at the next one. All right, next up is a Carolina rig. This is a rig my son Joel fishes all the time and many times he spanks my butt with this thing. I don't like fishing as much as he does simply because, as I told you earlier, I really like to feel that tap and you generally don't with this technique. That doesn't mean it's not effective. If you want to go out there and catch fish, this is a great way to rig. Now what I've got, I've got a swivel tied to one end, about maybe three feet a liter and then just a hook. Here's my egg sinker. What I'm going to do is thread this onto my main line and then tie the main line to the swivel to complete the Carolina rig. Let me show you. All right, that's it. We've got our egg sinker threaded on main line, our swivel, our leader, and our hook. But you know what we need is a bait. Let me get that. 
All right, once again, we just have a nose hook, that's it. Now, something I should mention, some people do like to put a bead in between the weight and the swivel. Feel like it kind of protects the knot right here. Also, it, it adds a noise element. Uh, I don't really care, but if you think that's important, add a bead. Also very cumbersome to cast on casting gear. I like to use spinning gear. Now I can tell you from experience, without question, you want to fish this against the current. That kind of goes against conventional wisdom. People generally want to fish baits with the current, but if you do with this rig, that bait's going to be kind of chasing that weight, maybe even getting on the other side of it, making it not do much of anything when you actually hop that lead, fish it against the current. And of course, it's also another rig that you definitely want to fish in deep water. It's most effective in deep water, let's say that. Not something you necessarily throw in a flat. And like the drop shot rig, there's no weight to it, so fish really don't have any idea that it's not natural. But of course, you're not maintaining close contact with your lure. As I mentioned, you may not know you got a strike. When you go to pick up that weight and you feel any type of tension, anything spongy, that's when you got to really hard set the hook. You're going to set the hook a lot of times on nothing, but that's okay. A lot of times you're going to set it onto a fish. All right, last but certainly not least is a cork rig. This is a Versamax bolt. I've been using this a lot lately. It's been very effective. I've got that about two feet above a 16th ounce death grip jig head. Really like light weights when I'm fishing a cork. Makes the bait fall more naturally, much more like a shrimp. And of course, I've got a Lemonhead Matrix Shad on here. And I really think most of the time, fish mistake baits under a cork for a shrimp more so than a bait fish. So I want that slow, steady fall that you get with the 16th ounce. But let's take a look and see how it looks from a fish's perspective. And of course, I'm throwing this on a spinning rig. You don't know, try and throw a cork on a bait caster. This is an Akuma Tournament Concept Rod that I love, super light, an Akuma ITX spinning reel. All right, you can clearly see why corks are so effective. That bait just jumps in and out of the strike zone, providing ample opportunity for fish to chomp on it. All right, no one type of rig is right for every situation. They all have their place, but I tell you what, Seeing that drop shot in the pool was a revelation for me, no doubt about it. I'm definitely gonna be fishing that a whole lot more, particularly in these cold weather months that we're coming into now. It keeps that bait off the bottom. It makes it look just really irresistible. A lot of you are ahead of me on that, but I've seen the light and can't wait to use it. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. You can do that by clicking that button right there. Also, here's two videos that YouTube thinks you would like. Check those out when you get a chance. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh or poolside, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.